With a static NAT, we could make sure that a specific inside local address always got mapped to the very same inside global address. But that's not very scalable, is it? If we have to go in and administratively configure every single IP address inside of our network, what we might want to do if we had a lot of inside local addresses that needed to go out to the outside, we could just group them together and tell them to select from a pool of available inside global addresses. And this is assuming that our service provider has given us multiple inside global addresses. But let's assume for this example that we do have a range of publicly routable IP addresses that our service provider gave us. What we can do is say, let's let the IP addresses inside of the network, the inside local addresses, let's let them get an IP address assignment from this pool, this collection of publicly routable IP addresses. This is called dynamic NAT. Consider the example on screen. PC1 is trying to go out to the web server 3.3.3.3, and as the packet comes into router R1, the source address is the inside local address. It's 10.1.1.101, and the destination address is the address of the web server 3.3.3.3 but what's going to happen is that source address being an inside local address is going to be translated into one of potentially many inside global addresses addresses that are routable on the public internet and the source address is going to be changed in this example to 4.4.4.2 notice this is not the IP address of the physical interface on R1 this was just one of a pool of publicly routable IP addresses and when PC2, which has a different inside local address, when it sends to the same web server, it's going to have a source address in our example of 10.1.1.102. Same destination address, and the source address is going to be translated into one of the inside global addresses in our pool. In this example, it's going to be 4.4.4.3, and off the packet goes to the web server. Let's bring up a table to make sure we understand which addresses are inside local and which are inside global. PC1 had a private IP address of 10.1.1.101 and it was translated into one of the addresses in the pool of publicly writable IP addresses that router R1 was configured with. It was translated into 4.4.4.2. That's an inside global address. Remember, inside means that it's referencing a device inside of the network and global means that it's a publicly writable IP address. For PC2, we had an inside local address of 10.1.1.102, and it was translated into an inside global address of 4.4.4.3. This is dynamic NAT. We don't have a static mapping saying this inside local address is always going to be mapped to this inside global address. Instead, we just say, if you're an inside local address, then you get to pick an IP address from this pool of inside global addresses. Let's see how to set this up. We're going to begin configuring dynamic NAT the same way we began configuring static NAT. We're going to say which of our interfaces on R1 is an inside interface and which is an outside interface. Let's go into global configuration mode on R1 and from our topology we can see that fast ethernet 0 slash 0 that's on the inside of the network. We'll say interface fast ethernet 0 slash 0 and I'll say IP NAT inside. Let's go into fast ethernet 0 slash 1 and we'll say IP NAT outside. And now we need to define the IP addresses inside of the network. And here we're talking about the inside local addresses. We're going to do this using something called an access control list, an ACL. And we're going to talk about access control lists more formally later on in this video series. But for now, just realize that an access control list is oftentimes used to permit traffic or to deny traffic. That's not really the purpose here. We're going to use an access control list to identify traffic. We're going to say, if you match this access control list, if you match this range of addresses as defined by this ACL, this ACL, then you are an inside local address. And we're going to translate you into an IP address that's part of this pool of inside global addresses. Let's create a basic access control list. We'll say access hyphen list. We'll give a number and I'll say one. Permit. And we're trying to match the inside local addresses, the private IP addresses inside of our network. And we're using the 10.1.1.0 slash 24 address space inside of the network. So I'll say 10.1.1.0, but remember how we configured the network statement with OSPF? We didn't give a subnet mask, we gave a wildcard mask. Same thing here, we're going to give a wildcard mask. If I've got a 24-bit subnet mask, 
Do you remember what the wildcard mask would look like? It would be 0.0.0.255. And that's it. That's the access control list that defines our inside local addresses. Now we need to define a pool of inside global addresses, publicly routable IP addresses. And in our example, let's imagine that our internet service provider told us that we could use, in addition to 4.4.4.4, that's the publicly routable IP address assigned to the outside interface on R1. In addition to that, our internet service provider told us that we could use 4.4.4.2 and 4.4.4.3. Let's use that range of addresses. It's a small range. It's only two IP addresses. Maybe we've got a larger range in the real world. But the syntax works like this. To define this pool, we're going to say IP NAT pool, and then we give a name for this pool. And when I'm naming a variable in Cisco IOS, I usually like to do it in all uppercase. That way, when I'm looking at my configuration, if I see something in all uppercase, then in almost all cases, I know that that's a name that I came up with. That's not some sort of a special Cisco IOS keyword. That's a name that I made up. And I'm just going to use the name of pool. We could have called it something else, but I'll just call it pool. And I'm going to give the range of addresses that live in this pool. We're going to begin with 4.4.4.2. And I could have many, many IP addresses in this range. In our case, we've just got a couple. So the ending address is going to be 4.4.4.3. I haven't yet said what the subnet mask is. We need to do that. So we'll give a space and say net mask. And we'll give the subnet mask. Not the wildcard, but the subnet mask, which is 255.255.255.0, we'll say. We'll enter that. Let's sum up. We now have an access list that's defining our inside local addresses. We've got a NAT pool that is defining our inside global addresses. We've already said fast ethernet 0 slash 0 is the inside interface. Fast ethernet 0 slash 1 is the outside interface. Now we just need a command to tie things together. We need a command to say that we're going to be translating IP addresses matched by the access list into one of the IP addresses in this range, in this pool of addresses that we've defined. Here's the command that ties things together. We say IP NAT inside source list 1. We're referring to access control list 1 to define our inside local addresses. And we want to translate those inside local addresses into one of the available inside global addresses in a specific pool. Here's how we specify the pool. We'll say pool, and we'll give the name of the pool. And in all uppercase, I said P-O-O-L was the name. And we're done. We've now defined our NAT translations. Let's test it out. Let's go to PC1 and ping 3.3.3.3. Then we'll do the same thing for PC2. And we'll see if we have any NAT translations known to router R1. We'll go to PC1 and we'll ping 3.3.3.3. Let's do that right now. Ping 3.3.3.3. Success. Let's do the same thing on PC2. We'll do a ping 3.3.3.3. And we'll see if those translations really happen to N R1. We'll do a show IP NAT translations and check it out. We have an inside local address. This is PC1 of 10.1.1.101. And it was translated into an inside global address of 4.4.4.2. Excellent. What about PC2? We see it down here, 10.1.1.102. That was the inside local address. It was translated to the other IP address in our pool, which was 4.4.4.3. This is an example of dynamic NAT, where we had a collection of inside local addresses that were dynamically translated into a pool of inside global addresses.